For more on all of this, Stephen Guibault is Minister of Environment and Climate Change. He's in Montreal. Hi, Minister Guibault. Good to have you back on the program. Thank you very much, Rashi. Uh, Minister, our viewers were just looking at some of the devastation climate change is causing in real time in Europe and, and right here at home in Canada. Uh, your government today has released through a discussion paper some options it is considering to rein emissions in the oil and gas sector here in Canada in. Uh, environmental advocates, though, they're saying that it's not just reining in emissions, it's really a cap on production that is necessary. Why aren't you considering that? Well, for a couple of different reasons. I mean, even if we were to uh, to reduce production in in Canada of fossil fuels, Canadians are still using fossil fuels. They're still consuming fossil fuels in in their vehicles, uh, in, in in our trains, in our airplanes. So the oil would just come from somewhere else. What we need to do is to reduce consumption of fossil fuels in Canada and to ensure that the oil that is or oil and gas that is being produced is produced by reducing the amount of the, the amount of greenhouse gas that is going into the atmosphere. And it's the latter part of your answer there that I do want to explore a little more deeply with you. But but on the the sort of first part of it, the idea that uh, you know, oil is still in demand here, that oil and gas are, are still in demand. Is it the position of your government then that production will continue to increase and that's OK? It's not it's not up to the government to, 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 to decide uh, to, to decide that. But if we if we look at the at the latest projection from the Canadian Energy Regulator, which is an independent body from from the federal government in in their last assessment about a year ago, they uh, they concluded that we would we're probably looking at a a, a a cap in production around 2032 in Canada, and then oil production will decline, which is in line with, uh, in line with other international institutions are saying the, the IPCC, the International Energy Agency, both tell us that between now and 2050, oil consumption and therefore production will be reduced by about 75%. So we're we're producing and consuming about 100 million barrels of oil every day right now. This will go down to somewhere between 25 and 35 million barrels a day in 2050. So they will be far less oil produced and consumed in, in the world in the coming decades. Do you think that what's happening, though, for example, with Russia, which has seen Canada as a result increase its oil production by about 300,000 barrels a day, do you think that changes that production, that projection, though? No, it doesn't. In the emission reduction plan that we presented in, in March, we, we used the figures from the Canadian Energy Regulator that anticipated an increase in production of a million barrels between now and 2030. And, and despite that, we were able to show how Canada will meet its 2030 targets in various sectors, including oil and gas, transportation, agriculture, buildings, so on and so forth. So 300,000 barrels is totally within the margins of what, of what the Canadian Energy Regulator Regulator was forecasting uh, between between now and 20, uh, 2030. And when you say, though, that by 2032, for example, there will be a cap, you don't mean that the federal government is going to impose one. Is that is your government unequivocal no, about that? No, it's a, it's 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 a peak. It's peak in production. That's that's what the, the, the regulator. So that's very different than a cap, right? That's what. Yes, yes. I said cap. I should have said peak in production because what we're capping right now is is the emissions from the oil and gas sector. We're not waiting for 2032 for that to happen. So let me just ask you then, if you're not going to cap production, but you are going to try and rein in or cap emissions, are you banking solely on technology making up the difference? Uh, in part, for sure, yes. Um, and we're already doing it. We've already put in place regulation to, to, to rein in uh, emissions of methane, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, about 27 to 30 times more powerful than CO2. Uh, those emissions in the oil and gas sector are are on on, on the path to be reduced by, by 40 to 45%. We, we, and we've done that in a matter of a few years. And we're not stopping there. We want to get the 75% methane reduction by, by, by 2030. Um, so what, what, what we're trying to do really is, regardless of what happens with production in Canada of fossil fuels, we want to ensure that emissions are going down, or we're capping them, and will go down so that we can meet our 2030 targets and get to net zero by 2050. I guess, though, what I wonder, uh, uh, you know, for Canadians who are watching right now is, whether or not your government actually has the tools in place or will through this consultation process to ensure that happens where oil and gas is concerned. Because that argument so far has been so focused on capping production, because your government says it won't happen, if you rely on something like carbon capture uh, in storage and utilization, I mean, you're, you're relying on a technology that is largely unproven at the scale that your government is hoping it will work. 
Actually, I think we were very prudent in the emissions reduction plan that I was talking to, talking about a little bit earlier. Um, we're hoping to reduce emissions compared to what they were in 2005 by about 300 million tons a year. We're banking on carbon capture and storage for 5% of that 300 million tons. So I, we're not we're really not putting all our eggs uh, all our eggs in that basket. It is one of many solutions that that that, that we're exploring uh, for for the oil and gas sector as well as many other sectors. Uh, we a couple of weeks ago uh, we, we published new regulations for what we call the clean fuel standards. So to ensure that the the fossil fuels that we are consuming in Canada, the the, 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 the gasoline that we're consuming will be lower and lower emissions uh, as uh, you're, the Europeans are doing this. Uh, California uh, is doing this as well. We've we've announced that we would we would have sales mandate for zero emission vehicles by by 2026, 60 percent by 2030, and 100 percent by 2035. So uh, this idea that that, that that capturing and sequestering carbon is the only game in town as far as our climate change plan is concerned is simply not true. Okay, I, I think that characterization is fair, but even five percent isn't a negligible amount, right? And. Uh, it is largely unproven at this scale, right? It costs a lot of money. You're, you know, I know that it's a tax credit that you're offering. We've already heard from one company that says that it probably won't incentivize them to do it. Uh, it again, 5% is not nothing. It, it is a gamble. It's always a gamble when it comes to technology. Do we know that we can get to 100% of, of zero, uh, zero emission vehicles by 2035? We don't, but we're putting in place measures to ensure we get there. We're putting in place uh, an incentive so people, more Canadians can go for, 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 for electric vehicles. We're deploying tens of thousands of charging stations across the country. We've already, already installed 25,000. We'll be installing another 50,000. We're investing with companies to transform the Canadian auto sector from, from a sector that produces internal combustion engine to electric vehicles. But do we have, are we are we 100% sure that we will get there? We, we never, I mean, this is public policy. Guarantees are, are, are unfortunately something that, that don't exist, but we're confident that with all of the measures we're putting in place, we, we will achieve, we, we will achieve our targets. Respectfully, though, I'm, uh, I, take, I take your point that, you know, there are no guarantees. But I think what Canadians have seen time and time again from your government and certainly the government before it and the government before that is a failure to meet the targets that are set out. So when I specifically, ref has, which, when which I specifically refer to carbon capture and, and the gamble that it, that's taking there, it, 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 it's not just like putting in electric vehicle stations, right? It's a huge capital investment that right now, uh, you know, companies are hesitant to make. That's why I ask. I, I, I disagree with you. We haven't missed any of the targets. My government has not missed any of the targets that we've set for ourselves when it comes to, to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Other governments have. In Canada, it's true, but, but not us. And, and again, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing a number of things. So you talk about capture and, capture and storage. We're, we're trying to transform the, 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 the electrical system and electrical, uh, electricity production in Canada. We've put in place le legislation to, to ban the, 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 the use of coal by 2030. It's happening much faster than, than, than what we thought. If you look at the, 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 the 2019 inventories, greenhouse gas inventories, emissions are going down. Down. Like uh, they went down also in 2020. It's hard to tell what was because yeah, of the pandemic, pandemic and what was because yeah. of. Well, I, I, I've asked, I've asked experts, and they couldn't tell me that. So if if you know that, well, no, you, no, I'm just saying, I'm saying, I agree. It is difficult to ascertain what's due to what. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But in 2019, there was no pandemic. Oil production went up. The economy was 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 red hot in Canada, and our emissions still went down. So our plan is starting to work. We're, we we have one of the most ambitious carbon pricing systems in the world, and according to the IMF, one of the best ones. Um, so we're we're doing we're doing everything we possibly can to reduce emissions, and we're not banking on one single technology or or, or one single piece of policy to, uh, to 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 get to where we need to go. Okay, Minister, I'm out of time. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.